So today we're going to start with chapter 7, which is systems of equations. And you've done this many times before, but look, we're going to jump into a little bit some more complicated ones. Before you've done just two lines, but now we're going to do like two line, a line in a parabola or a line in a circle or two circles and things like that. So in the next section you're actually going to get one that has three variables. But let's just start off by looking at this example one here. <coughs> and it shows solve one of the uh, has your five steps for using substitution method. Remember we've looked at several methods. We're going to start with substitution and we'll look at graphing here in a second. But let's do substitution first. Let's say solve one of the equations for one of the variables in terms of the other. So get my pen here. So let's just take you have x minus y equals 0 and 5x minus 3 y equals 6. So I'm going to take that first equation because it looks the easiest. x minus y equals 0. Solve it for x. So x equals y. Okay, so step one, done. Step two, substitute the expression found in step one into the other equation to obtain an equation in one variable. So x equals that, so I'm going to take that and plug it in for x. So 5y minus 3y equals 6. So step two, complete. Step three, solve that sucker. So that would be 2y equals 6, y equals 3. Step three, done. Alright, so step four, put that back in to that other equation. It's back to substitute the value contained in step three into the expression obtained in step one to find the value of the other variable. So I'm going to take it, plug it right back in to right there. So x is equal to three. So my answer here is the x value and the y value, three, three. So it says check that the solution satisfies the both of the original equations. So if I plug in 3 minus 3, does that equal 0? Yes, it does. 5 times 3 minus 3 times 3, 15 minus 9, does give me 6. So both of those work, and that takes care of step number 5. If you remember from any algebra, those are two lines. And so very roughly here, there's one line, and the other line's going to be coming up something like this somewhere, so they're going to meet at the point 3, 3. That's the only point that those two lines have in common. Okay. Now moving on to example number two, a word problem here. It says a total of 25000 is invested into two funds paying 7% interest and 4% simple interest. The yearly interest is $1,405. How much is invested at each of these guys? So what we have to do now is we actually have to make our system of equations and solve it. Okay. So I'm just going to say my x is my amount that I'm putting in the 7% and my y is the amount that I'm putting in my 4%. And you can name what it let it whatever letters you want to. It doesn't have to be x and y. It can be whatever. Okay. But if I look at how much money I put in to those investments, I'm going to put some in for x. I'm going to put some in for y. All together, I put in um, a total of $25,000, right? So I know I put in a total of $25,000. Okay, so that looks at just your total amount there. That just looks at just this one number right here. Okay, now we're going to look at how much money these make. And that's when where the interest rates are going to come into play. And, and we know we make that much interest, right? The 1405 so for the x, the 7%, and you always want to put the percent in decimal form. And for the y, it was 4%. And how much money did we make all together in the interest? We made 1405. Take that off there. We made 1405. So that is 1405. Okay? So right here is your system of equations. Okay? So if we go through the steps in solving that, just like what we did before, we can come up with our two different amounts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first equation here, the x plus y equals 25,000. I'm going to take that and just solve it for y, the y by itself. So y is equal to 25,000 minus x. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take that value and plug it in for that y right there. Okay. So when I do that, I'm going to come up with 0.07x plus 0.04, now instead of saying x, we're going to plug in all that in, or instead of saying y, we're going to plug in the 25,000 minus x. 
and go ahead and finish the rest of that off there like that. Now all you gotta do is simply just solve that thing for x. So distribute your 0.04. That's a thousand minus 0.04x equals 1405. Combine your 0.04, 0.03x. Oh, I'm sorry, 0.07 to and 0.04 to 0.03x. Move over your thousand. That's 405. Divide both sides. You get x equals 13,500. Okay, so in my, remember the x is the 7% one, so in the 7% I put in a total of 13,500. So in my um, 4%, remember the two values have to add up to 25,000, so if I just take that away from, if I do the 25,000 minus the 13,500, I get my total of 11,500 for the 11 or for the 4%. Okay? So right there shows you how much in each account you need to put in order to get that much interest. Now moving on to example 3, we're going to see that we're going to look at non-linear systems meaning they don't always lines like they have been. Okay? You can look at example number 3 it actually shows a line here and this is going to be a parabola so if I were to draw just a quick little sketch and this is not an accurate sketch anyway but you can see that we have a parabola and a line these guys intersect two different times okay I could have a line coming down here where it doesn't even touch it at all or I could have a line that barely just touches it one time so you could have a variety of answers possible here but let's just look at this and go through just like what we've been doing negative 2x plus y equals 5 and x squared plus 3x minus y equals 1. Take one of those and solve it for one of the variables. I'm going to pick the first one because it looks a whole lot easier to solve for the y. Okay, So all I'm going to do is just basically add the 2x over to the other side. <coughs> so what we have there is I'm going to take that y value and plug it in for that y right there. So it's going to be x squared plus 3x minus the 2x plus 5 equals 1. And probably the most common mistake people make is they forget to do the distributing of that negative sign. Combine my terms together. I'm going to go ahead and move that 1 back over here so we get it equal to 0 because if you notice we need to try to factor that out if we can and we can that goes to x plus 3 x minus 2 and then of course each one of those will give you x values of a negative 3 and a positive 2. Okay. Now are we done? No. We've only figured out half the answer, haven't we? Here we're going to have two answers. One is a negative 3 comma something and the other one's going to be 2 comma something. We've got to figure out those x values or the y values now we've given those x values. So the easiest place to plug these, we can plug these numbers in anywhere you want to. Plug in one at a time. But the easiest place is back here where we solved it for the y. So if I plug in 2 times a negative 3 plus 5, it's a negative 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. So that would be a negative 1 there. Or if I plug in the 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9. So that right there is going to be where my two answers are, negative 3, negative 1, and 2, 9. That tells you where the two places intersect at. Now I scoot down to the bottom of the page there, example number 4. Solving the system of equations again, we can see that this is a line. Now when we have x squared and a negative y squared, that will actually give us a hyperbola. And what I, if you remember from algebra hyperbola, okay, a line, this line is going to be coming through something like this, okay. Remember a hyperbola is something that looks kind of like two parabolas going out from each other, okay. But somehow these guys are going to intersect or maybe not intersect, we don't know, we're going to find out, okay. So what happens here is let's follow that same process and let's 
and get one of these guys by themselves. To me, still that Y looks like the easiest, so I'm going to just start with that and go from there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that Y over to the other side, and then add your three. <coughs> okay, so 2x plus Y equals, 2x plus 3 equals Y. So I'm going to take that and take that and plug that in for the y that's right there. So 2 times x squared plus 4x minus 2x plus 3 squared equals nothing. So the first thing you need to do is you need to square this 2x plus 3 out. So make sure you use the shortcut like I'm doing right now, or you do it out by hand, either way is fine. Then distribute your negative. Oops. Distribute the negative, and negative 12x minus 9 equals 0. Combine your like terms, then negative 2x squared. 4 and negative 12 is a negative 8x, and a negative 9. <coughs> okay, so once I have that right there, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm just going to divide everything by a negative. So everything is a positive instead of a negative, so I don't really mess up things really bad here. Now we can try to factor that out. Okay, unfortunately we can't, this one will not factor out. Okay, so when things don't factor out, you got to use the good old quadratic formula. And the, the negative b... Uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so I'm going to start plugging that in, and negative b plus or minus b squared, which is 8 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2, not 2a, but let's plug in the a value. 2a, a is so let's try to start simplifying that. Gonna run out of room here. 64. 4 times 8, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, times 9 is 72, all over 4. Now, let's look right here. Okay. 64 minus 72 is gonna be a negative number. And can we take the square root of a negative number? That will actually give us that imaginary number, right? And what we are concerned about is where these things cross. We're not concerned where they cross imaginarily, but we're looking at only where they cross. So, since I can't do that right there, I know oops, that's a problem. Can't do that, so I'm going to say there's no real solution. And that is your answer. There's no real solution. What that means is, if I were to draw the hyperbola coming through here, the hyperbola is going to be coming through something like this, where this line right here and the hyperbola, they'll never intertouch. So they never actually cross. So there's no answer that they have in common. So now we're going to look at the graphical approach for question number five. If you remember back from Algebra 2, you did um, solving by substitution, which we looked at, solve by graphing, which we're going to do now, and solve by combination. Okay, it's hard to do combination on these, so we're looking at look at the graphical approach right now. <coughs> so I'm going to start off by the first equation, I'm going to do in the blue, the y equals the natural log of x. Okay, if you remember natural log of 0, I'm sorry, natural log of 1 is 0. If you look at any other number that doesn't really come out to nice numbers, but if you go out to 8, it's a little bit more than 2, so it goes way out like this. It's not an exact graph, but you get the idea there. Okay? And what happens on the red line? Now, this is just a line, isn't it? x plus y equals 1. In order to get that to graph, you get in the y slope intercept form, a negative x plus 1. That's a little bit easier to graph. You start at 1. You go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And it's that line that comes through 
Let's try my better line here. Let's get my good line. The line that comes through something like that. Okay. So, where is the point of intersection? That point of intersection is right there, that green point. And that point is the point 1, 0. Now, something that we need to do that I, I forgot to do on those last few ones is we've got to check to make sure it works. Okay. <coughs> Plug it in. 0 equals natural log of 1. And that is correct. If you plugged it in your calculator, natural log of 1 is 0. Because anything to the zero power is always one. And we have zero. I'm sorry, one plus zero equals one. And both of those work. Okay? And that's it for number five. So now we're going to look at example number six, which is a investment problem here. A small business has an initial investment of six thousand. The unit cost of product is twenty three twenty and the selling price is thirty five twenty. How many units must be sold to break even? That break even point was referring to the place of how many items do you need to sell so you're actually starting to make a profit. So you know before that point you're losing money and after that point you are making money. Okay? So I'm going to jot down an equation here. The total cost of this thing here is equal to the cost per unit multiplied that times the number of units sold add to that your initial investment. Okay? So, your total cost, you know, however much it, how, how much does it cost you to, to produce this item? Well, you do that by how much it costs per item, times how many items you make, and plus how much money you have invested into that to start up everything. So, let's look at our um, information here and figure out what our equation could be. Our cost Cost per unit. Well, how much does it cost us to make the, each item? It says it costs $23.20. Now, I have no idea how much each unit, uh, how many units we're doing. That's what we're trying to solve for. So that's my X. Plus, how much money does it take us to initially start with? Well, it cost us 6000 to begin with. Okay. Now, the other equation that you need to know is your, your total revenue. Revenue. How do you figure out the total revenue? Well, that is determined by you take your selling price, times that by your number of units sold. Okay. So if we look at that, and that's kind of hopefully that's a little obvious. You, you figure out your how much money you're going to bring in by taking how many things you sold times it by the price. So my revenue is equal to what's the sales price is thirty five dollars. And 20 cents times that by whatever it is that we're looking for. How many that we're selling. Okay. Now that break even point is when your R, let's change the color here so it sticks out a little more. R is equal to see your revenue and cost are equal to each other. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to just substitute these values into that equation now. 3520x is equal to 2320x plus 6,000. Can I solve that for x now? Sure. So, subtract. You get 12x equals 6,000. So x is 500. So you need to sell 500 units of whatever it is that you're making. If you sell less than 500, it means you're not making money. You're going to be losing money, but if you make more than 500, you're actually going to be making money, making a profit. Okay? That wraps it up for section 7-1.